can't find it. There we go. <laughs> Sandy, I'm happy for you to interject at any point in time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to practice this once more. It's Google Yalanji. Perfect. Oh, wonderful. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to our, this is a very special interview today. We have our beautiful guests or our primary speaker for the festival, um, who is also going to be doing our welcome to country. So this is Google Yalanji. Uh, she is going to come and talk to us all about this fantastic story. Um, please go ahead. I just, I just want to give you the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rhiannon. So, Yundi Yalada, hello. My name is Talia um, and I'm a Googie Yalanji woman from the Daintree area in far north Queensland. Um, I'd like to start by paying my respects to the um, traditional owners of the country that I am recording on today, uh, which is the Gimoy Wallabari Yudinji people here in Cairns in far north Queensland. And I'd also like to extend that respect to wherever you're watching from and the traditional owners of those lands. So yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm quite passionate about um, many things like language, traditional languages in particular, um, education, uh, background in dance and movement, um, and also really passionate about supporting leaders. So um, leadership of young women, particularly, um, and First Nations women. Oh, that is fantastic. Oh, it, honestly, the, the strength of the First Nations people uh, is just incredibly inspiring. Um, and I love to hear the stories that they come up, like they, they have as part of their culture. I was raised by my grandma who, um, well, I was raised on um, Indigenous stories. That was my bedtime stories when I was young. So I feel like it really, it makes Australia feel like home to everyone when we connect to that original culture and we have also Sandy Davies who you co-authored a book with uh, and are releasing around the time of the festival which is super exciting with Beck Peroz uh, who is one of our volunteers which is how we all got in touch so say hi Sandy and I'd love to hear a bit about you too yeah so good day everybody I'm Sandy Davies and I'm actually coming to you from Talia's homeland. So she's down in Cairns and I'm up here in the Bosman area on Gugu Yalanji country. And um, yeah, I'm so excited to be here. And for me, when the opportunity arose through the Douglas Shire and the Queensland government and the Regional Arts Development Fund for us to be able to do our book launch of the power to rise above with the Logan Writers Festival, I just exploded with joy. And and to be able for Talia and I to both come down and Talia to share her story that she shares in this anthology of just her irrepressible resilience. I, it's just so exciting. I can't wait for us to have this soft launch of the book down there and, and for Talia to be able to, to speak to everyone down there. And she's just contagious. Everyone will <laughs> just float out feeling a little bit stronger and and whatever, more capable and ready to launch. <laughs> <laughs> so Talia, tell us a bit about the story you've got in the anthology. Yeah, so the story that I have is my personal, um, you know, my story from birth to growing up um, and then some of the challenges that I've faced throughout my life. Um, and it's about overcoming those challenges. So I guess I share some of those tools that I've used to be able to overcome those challenges throughout my journey um, and with hopefully the message um, and sending to others that they too have everything that they need to be able to overcome the challenges in their life journey as well. Oh, wonderful. That's such a good message to share as well. Ah, oh, fantastic. So tell me a bit about the process of putting together this anthology. Uh, and how how this all came to be like when did you decide to create an anthology that I'm just going to say fits perfectly with this year's theme of growth and resilience yeah it's absolutely perfect marriage with the Logan Writers Festival with the growth and resilience theme and it, it's been a little bit of a long time coming because it actually started pre-COVID um, and how it evolved initially was I was in a workplace that was experiencing quite a bit of bullying from a general manager down to especially a lot of the younger female staff. And the biggest targets of the bullying seem to be really 
capable, optimistic young women with lots of potential. And for me, something just graded. It, it's bad enough any kind of bully, but there's just something about our feminist hearts that when it's another woman, it's just a hundred times worse. And I ended up with one of the girls who had went one of the young women who had experienced quite a heavy dose of bullying one day I came in to start my shift and she was just exploding and I shared with her a bullying experience that I had had and her response was you no way and I realized how have I gotten to 50 and I have other younger people that looked to me and see because I'm happy and confident in the space I am in now that they don't think there could have been any obstacles in getting to that destination. And I just realized we, we do a disservice when we don't share and shout out our obstacles because you never know when someone else is in a similar obstacle or facing a similar barrier or, or holding trauma that's similar. And when, when you share, it's halved. Oh, absolutely. When I feel like that's why it's so important to get all these different stories, especially like I'm passionate about the city of Logan, to be honest, because it is the constant underdog. We're the ones that always seem to get skipped over. Um, and we're the ones that seem to, like, everyone goes to the Gold Coast or to Brisbane uh, and they never seem to nurture what's in Logan and so the whole point of the Logan Writers Festival is to nurture that and to take the stories from Logan and share them as far and wide as possible because those stories get mimicked in so many other places that get forgotten we keep hearing stories like Hollywood and uh, the main publishers are renowned for this but they will just do the same stories about the same wealthy white people constantly and it's so crucial to us to have those different cultural stories and different socioeconomic stories because that's what the majority of us go through and that's what the majority of us deal with and when we're constantly comparing ourselves to this elusive Kardashian lifestyle uh, it really does impact our mental health and well-being so I am so passionate about showing people what the truth is behind the stories as well as keeping that bit of fantasy and hope and community running through us all. Uh, Tali, I would love to know what kind of, um, what kind of obstacles are the um, Indigenous people facing in accessing uh, the literary world, like getting their stories out? Um, did you come across any major obstacles um, or did you find that people were really keen to hear your story and to see you out there? Well, I'm so grateful for this opportunity to be able to share my story a little bit further than those who've been connected with me in my life um, and knowing my story quite personally, like um, Sandy, for example, having shared in my teenage years and into my young adult life. And she'll know some of those stories quite personally. But to be able to leverage that through this Writers' Festival and be able to share on, if I could draw from one particular experience in um, my chapter that I've written, is on the crabs in a bucket theory. So essentially crabs in a bucket theory reflects um, similar to tall poppy syndrome where there's this mm. social comparison or this need to feel like you need to drag someone back because of their success and um it can often be reflected around you know jealousy or um yeah just unable to accept other people's successes rather than cheering them on and mm. so I feel like in my teenage years I experienced that firsthand where um I, I was so passionate about pursuing certain um aspirations and with good intentions to be able to bring others along for the journey, but feeling like it wasn't quite embraced or celebrated by those around me, um, whether mm. that was Indigenous or non-Indigenous. And um, if I could speak as an Indigenous woman, we do have this challenge of living in two worlds. We have to be, be able to main, maintain the strength of our culture, but, at, but also finding our sense of belonging in a world that was once foreign to our people and learning how to become cultured in that as well. So this idea of crabs in a bucket theory is one particular challenge that I know isn't um, a challenge that I face on my own, but there are many other Indigenous people throughout this country and even perhaps non-Indigenous people that, that face that similar theory. Mm. Oh, you know, absolutely. and it, it, 
it was that bucket of crabs theory that just absolutely for me crystallized why we did the power to rise above because this is a global collaboration and we have women from all over the world numerous first nation women all of us have come together collectively to share our stories to help others rise and we have a filipina hip hop artist from the hawaiian islands that also talks about the bucket of crabs theory and it just for me it was just that you know aha of you know, bringing us all together to share our journeys with others so that they don't feel alone or isolated and just know that they'll get through any of those tough, tough times too. A hundred percent. Do you think that the, I'm not sure if the crabs feel this way, but I know that the tall poppy syndrome in humans can come from, it comes from that jealousy. It's also, a, it comes from like a fear of change. They don't want people to be changing and moving away from them. But there's also a sense of if they are going to rise above what their lot has been in life, then it means I could have done the same thing and it makes me feel bad because I didn't do it. Like, do you feel like there's an element of that in some of those circumstances too? I do. Yeah, I would agree. I feel like a lot of the times it is about knowing who you are and where you come from and having holding strength in your identity. And if you are proud of who you are and all that makes up who you are, then you're willing to give things a go without the barriers of shame, without the barriers of embarrassment, without the barriers of fear and hesitation. And you will just go full speed <laughs> at whatever you are aiming for in life. And so really, I'm hoping that this story will empower others to be able to reflect upon who they are, where they come from, what their story is, so that they feel empowered to pursue whatever it is that they are called to pursue in their life. Oh, that is such a crucial element for every single writer I think I've ever met. By knowing yourself, you know where you stand. You know, like you are courageous enough to write what you need to write without fear of uh, rep well, not repercussions, but you you write without fear because you know that it's coming from you as a person and as you are. Knowing yourself means that you have a firm ground to stand on and that you are unshakable. And that is such a powerful place to be. Um, what was your journey like coming to that stage? Because no one ever, I don't, I feel like we kind of start like that and then we get rattled uh, as children. We get told that that's not okay. And then we have to find our way back to it a lot of the time. Um, what was your journey uh, going through that, Talia? I think at times it might shake you or might slow you down a little bit. Um, but it is about digging deep and having those internal reflections and with the support of those around you to be able to, you know, link arms or find your mentor and those people that speak life and encourage you um, that reaffirm who you are so that you are able to get back up again and keep going. A strong community is incredible. When you've got the people around you that support you, it makes such a big difference. And even if they like, often they're not your blood relatives, I find um, there's so many people in authoring circles that are like, yeah, my parents hate my work or they never approved of me being an artist. They wanted me to get a stable job or they wanted me to be like them. Um, so we're incredibly lucky when we've got a really strong community around us that supports us like that. So tell us a bit about what you'd be speaking about at the Logan Writers Festival as our special guest for the festival. So I will be um, sharing on um, the power to rise above and the title of our book. Uh, and basically that the power within each of our stories are powerful. So by being able to share my personal story, I'm just hoping that even if there's one person in the crowd to be able to connect with what I have to share, that that makes a difference. Um, so I'll be sharing some main points around who I am as a dancer um, and my passion for words and how I've been able to intertwine that into this chapter. Um, also talking about that the power that you hold within is an infinite power and so that you can draw on that anytime that you need um, and also what it means to stay grounded with your internal armour. So yeah, some of these um, these tools and internal sources of power that you can draw upon 
to be able to overcome the challenges in your own journey, whatever that is, because we know that we don't just face one challenge, we face many challenges over many years um, and many seasons. I think it all helps us build in to be good warriors, I guess. Uh, it trains mm -hmm. us up to tackle these things in the future. That is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to hear your talk. And we have a gorgeous yarning circle at the Logan Writers Centre. Uh, Logan or Logan Writers Centre. We've got the Queensland Writers Centre uh, at the mm -hmm. Logan Artists Association. Um, it, it's beautiful. There's big, beautiful rocks that people can sit on and we can really sort of circle around and uh, and see everything that you have to offer this is going to be so exciting i am really I'm, I'm really excited that you're able to come down and i am so grateful to the radf grants a lot of our authors have benefited from it myself included um and their ability to make these things happen is just I, i'm just so grateful for it how did you go about the process of getting the grant how did you find it yeah, well, the Douglas Shire Council is really approachable. Um, so yeah, we did, we had a meeting, we, we fleshed out the idea, and then they were just so quick to jump on board because any opportunity to celebrate, not just artists and creatives, but especially the younger generation of artists and creatives. And so to have this incredible talent like Talia, it's not just a heart song for the book because there's so many of us like from Beck and Mai's generation sharing our stories and the realizations we came to late but our authors like Talia that that Rad have been so keen to support um and three or four other of our young art like I've got a hip-hop artist and a homeless um activist and a few other young writers that are just that hope for the future that for all the rest of us that are a little bit older we can just rest assured that we are leaving everything in safe hands with with this amazing generation coming through so loved that the council was so quick to and radif to to provide that support for us to shout out our message not just in the douglas iron in the far north but to come down to logan and and shout out as well oh, it's going to be such a fantastic time having you both down um so is there anything that you would like to leave as a final message before the festival for our readers and budding writers? I suppose the biggest thing for me is just, you know, for any budding writers out there, if you've been dreaming about it, if you've got any of those little nagging doubts in the back of your head, you know, kick them out and just find that calm zen zone and reassure yourself that you can do it. The first thing you've got to do is just start tapping the keyboards or put that pen in your hand and take it to paper. And you'll be surprised at how your story will just blossom and bloom because we all have amazing stories within us. So all you've got to do is just give it a go and get started. That's beautiful, Sandy. Yeah, if I could add anything further, it would just be that when you when you often take those moments for quiet time and reflect, which might involve pen to paper, which might involve um, typing at your laptop or computer, those are the moments when you could find yourself, when you start to um, you know, pour out your story and it's been getting to know yourself that you will be able to find that power that is within you um, and being able to feel empowered to share that story with others, whether yeah. that's you know, sharing it verbally or whether that is you know, aiming to um, write your own book one day, getting that story out there you never know who it could impact and whose life you could change through them connecting with your story so um yeah I'm looking forward to this experience and I'm really grateful for the opportunity at the Logan Writers Festival so thank you Radif thank you Sandy and thank you Rhiannon for your time thank you both so much for coming along it is going to be a phenomenal two days uh so you will be able to see Gugu Yangali yeah Yelangi. Oh, I will get it right you're almost um, there Yelangi. <laughs> Yel Yelangi. 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 Yeah. Yelangi. yes okay oh, you know what I feel like they need to teach us how to speak in the indigenous languages like instead of teaching us Indonesian uh, or French or German we need to learn the local indigenous language to help keep them alive in primary schools and high schools um Otherwise, Absolutely. like that, that would just run off the tongue if I was a bit more adept mm -hmm. at it. 
Um, Talia is an incredible language teacher, by the way. <laughs> we'll talk. We'll talk. <laughs> oh, thank you both so much for coming. This has been phenomenal. Thank you both. Uh, thank you, Sandy, uh, and thank you, Talia. <laughs> and uh, we will You're see welcome. you both on September 9th and 10th at the Logan Writers Festival this year. It's going to be phenomenal. So please bring plenty of books. I feel like everyone is going to want a copy. See you both later, and we'll see everyone else at the Writers Festival in September. Bye.